Julie because everybody seems to be late. You know, so okay. it's the weather. Miss Sasha de Vasconcelos will become the uh, ambassador, one of the ambassadors of Creme. <laughs> The first one being Sastilio Sagiano, and then the second one is Le Monde, and je sera sûrement une. Um, ça sera une joie, si je peux dire en français. Absolument. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> de, de, de pouvoir um, rayonner ça et aussi porter une voix d'humanité dans ce monde qui est si triste quelquefois et que nous avons besoin de. de de donner, yeah. de, de donner cet um, espoir. Right. So, and thank you for Cram because thanks to what you're doing, which has been remarkable, uh, we are able to have a very strong image in the principality because well, you're continuing the story of very modestly. <laughs> but you're continuing the story of Princess Grace and and the story of family and of course Monaco. So we're honored. To be supporting you, and I'm avec la joie, je serai avec vous, tout cœur. Thank you, Tasha. <laughs> so, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris, I'm the director of, uh, of the Creme. I would like to welcome you all tonight. We have tonight a very special guest. Uh, she is a resident of Monaco, but she is very well known. It's very, um, I'm not very used to doing this, so I wish you will be supportive of me because it's hard to but I think we can handle it. I'm sure you will do it pretty well. We'll first watch a movie and then we'll start the interview with Antoinette, that is uh, a journalist. Thank you very much. Monaco, so that when they return, they can get things going. What happens now? The oncologists will draw up a plan of action and begin their work. Reach out and get support from the people that we need the most to help us on the ground. It opens doors. <coughs> Education is another problem area. Welcome to the Krem. Thank you so much. So great to see it's you. It's wonderful to be with you and I hope well, you um, and thank you for this welcome for all of you. It's uh, it means a lot to me, really. It's a pleasure. Ça me touche beaucoup et c'est pas facile d'être devant vous, mais je vais faire mon mieux. Um, de parler des choses qui me sont à cœur, voilà. Et um, ce mission est important. Donc, I thank you very much for your welcome and for being here tonight, all of you, each one of you. When did you start here, this? When did you start it? Amour was, was, began in 2006. So that's now, we're at 10 years plus, yes. a little. And I think the day that I was born, something inside, I think, the Lord has used me to do something bigger than me. And um, I think being born in a land where there was much difficulty, where there was civil war, where um, I saw some terrible things happening to the children and the women as a little girl. I didn't understand why at five. And I think this has never left my heart and my soul and my journey. And perhaps in January 2016, you were appointed UN Women Ambassador, yes. Global Champion Planet. Could you please tell us about your new mission? Thank you. Uh, uh, that was a great honor. And um, I suppose the most important thing at the UN level, what I learned, is I think what they saw is the work on the ground. When you ask me, why, what, what made me start and how. I think the UN saw the, ground, the grassroots work and um, the work, uh, I think they wanted a role model. Why did President Barroso ask me to be the United Nations, the, the, the European humanitarian ambassador? He, he, people need uh, a role model to speak for the people that don't have a voice mission at the UN level has been a great honor and respect only to be able to serve on a global platform a bigger story probably toward helping the fight against women violence um, especially children and to continue doing that work throughout Europe and now more in Europe I would like to do a lot more with a more and with Monaco of course and with Creme and uh, I think that's why the UN level has given a significant um, 
fourth. Today you are in the top 10 world's best uh, supermodels, but not only, you are also an actress. And particularly, particularly you are a woman of a big heart getting deeply involved in many philanthropic projects. Could you please tell us how did you start and um, is a few words about your childhood and your age. Okay, I'll start with an anecdote. Parce que c'est toujours les anecdotes qui fait qu'on bouge. Pourquoi? Je souviens à de petit Kevin qui avait 5 ans à Mozambique. Et quand j'arrivais en 2006 uh, pour la mission avec le United Nations AIDS to come back, I was, il est venu dans mes bras. Et j'ai dit à la femme, j'ai dit, pourquoi il est seul? Why is he alone? You know? And he, il n'avait pas de maman parce que la maman est morte avec le HIV. Et il n'y avait pas le le, um, the, the, there was no hospital to give her uh, support from transmission. So she couldn't actually, she had AIDS, but little, little Kevin got it because of his mother. He lost his mother, so he had no family. He had no father as well because there was a, both of them. So I see he was five and he just looked at me and I think this was the moment that made me understand that I needed to do something for Africa, for Mozambique, for my... I was born there, and I said, well... And he said, ajuda-nos, in Portuguese. And I said, vou ajudar. And uh, I came back, I spoke to the president, I met President Gabuza, who actually, um, I will be honest with you, um, he said, welcome home, our daughter, but... Uh, they were very welcoming, yet I left during a civil war. So uh, my book, why do I bring this today? <laughs> because it's a story of hope and because it's reconciliation and because I wrote this. Um, and it, that message of hope is, is, is because forgiveness was what I think um, I learned from even the message of President Mandela. And uh, if we can take a leaf of reconciliation and forgiveness, I think we can go a long, w a long way. Um, going back to little Kevin, it's because of him that Amor began. And it's because of him that I came to ask Prince Albert, my dear friend, for many, many years, if we could have a way to do that in Monaco. And he said yes open Amor. And I said, well, I'd like to call it Amor because Amor is love. And love is to share and to partage. Et ma vie, je suis très, uh, how do you say, um, reconnaissant. Je suis happy. I'm, I'm so thankful for all that has been given to me. And I wanted to share back. So um, I opened Amor. Voilà. And that's, ten year, that's 2006, so we're in 18, that's what? Notre secrétaire, oh no? General. <laughs> Paul Louis Aurelia. Parce que je fais pas ça seul, je dois dire merci à tous qui est soutenu. Um, we have Bettina. We have um, an amazing, we have five board members that have been with us, and each one of them has um, supported et Paul Louis Aurelia du début, quand il y avait, on a commencé avec une petite part qui a fait une autre part, qui a fait un rivière, donc, n'est-ce pas? During your childhood, you were the victim of two civil wars. How did these difficulties and sufferings influence your attitude to your further career as a supermodel, actress and humanitarian? Um, just so I get that, how did it influence me? Yes. Well, I think uh, we all are from our past somewhat. Tout ce qu'on a vécu, non? So I think that I was born in Africa. I have a European heritage. I have a, um, a story. I think it's about the story. And how did it influence me? When you live a civil war, I don't think you can ever be the same again. I think, uh, I think you, 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 it, 
and, and I think the world of beauty and fashion has, um, has made me understand a lot about being an image and what does that image do and why is it important to communicate and what are we communicating today and I think that important today is to communicate um, hope because there's not a lot of hope in this world but there's a lot of hope in what um, the spiritual world which I'm coming from and I have a lot of hope in in that mission voila and I think a more is there to sh my life I have hope I have hope in, I, in humanity I still believe even if there's one of us standing we should fight and we should all fight on this mission together that's what I think so I'll you'll keep hearing me until I no longer am but uh, thank you because I can't do it alone and um, I have an amazing team of support and uh, when it comes to success, you are a perfect example of one of the world's most successful supermodels. What do you think is about your life philosophy that has allowed you to succeed so well in this domain? I think I'm an optimist. <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think, uh, I think I always try to look for the best in people if I can, and I think that. Um, I've tried to make a journey, um, even if it's over today, it'll make a difference. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to share and I wanted to, I'm, I, voila, I, I just think, what are we, on est là pour si peu de temps, on est là, faisons une différence, faisons quelque chose, et bougeons ce monde qui a tant besoin, et si, Le métier de mannequin a fait le plateforme pour que je que je bouge les pouvoirs de ce temps. Il n'y a pas de pouvoir de ce temps parce que le pouvoir c'est le Seigneur et lui c'est que lui qui décide qui se passe. Mais the world makes you believe sometimes that maybe you're not good enough, maybe you're not enough. And I come from a world where you have to be perfect. And I, no one's perfect, and I think the only thing you can be is yourself. So, if that's not it, that's that's. Uh, I think encouraging, and and being kind, and and sharing with your fellow man is a very important mission, um, and I think we can do that from Monaco, in a very very strong way. How did you become a supermodel? As I know, you studied diplomacy. But how does one girl become a supermodel after the Faculty of Diplomatic Studies? <laughs> uh, I don't think you become that. I think they came to find me. I was on a bus. I was going to basketball practice. <laughs> and and, and um, um, I was actually wanting, to, I wanted to help children. That's all I wanted to ever do. I, I wanted to. I wanted to be a diplomat and, and I was looking for, I was studying international relations in Canada after we left Africa and uh, the, the scout from Elite, one of the biggest modeling agencies in New York, came and said, uh, I think, you know, I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm already on a basketball team. You can't have me. And he said, and he said, no, it's not for basketball. You're, you're, you're a giraffe. You're tall and you're beautiful. And I said, he said it's for modeling. I said, what is that? What is modeling? Um, I didn't. My father didn't educate me in modeling. He wanted me to study. He, we believed in our family that it was about education, and and he said, no, you, you could you could actually be a, you know, you could do a lot with that. I said, really? So here's my card, and I said, mom. I went home and told my mother, and she said, well, I don't know who these people are, but if they're serious, and if you take this seriously, well, I guess history is that, yeah, I guess I'm one of the G15, if you call it that. <laughs> but, but campaigns of Avon, from L'Oreal, all of them, I think I've done more campaigns and been blessed with all these missions, uh, but beauty only 
made me realize, if, if I have to tell you, that the real beauty is the divine beauty. And I, I saw when I was in front of the Victoria Falls in, in, South Af in, Mozam in Zimbabwe, I realized the force of, uh, that's, that's the beauty that makes you stop and realize that there's something far bigger than us in this world. And uh, um, I, I think uh, if it's a weapon to use, I will we'll use it, right? And <laughs> that's, the, that's the weapon. But if the autobiography is only to show, it's to tell a story. Actually, our my ghostwriter is is um, uh, Jérôme Bellet. He probably wouldn't want me to say this, but he would because he wrote the, the book. But he also, we spent a long, many hours of dialogue. Forgiveness and... Um, it's written like a film. He wrote, he did a 52-minute documentary for France Television. So I think the story um, is about certainly hope, yeah. And, and if it's, what you realize, it's not a really about you. It's about you being the messenger of something more important than you in everything that you do and who you speak to and who you connect with and why are we here. And... Um, uh, you know, uh, passons le bâton à les prochaines des générations. Je vois beaucoup de jeunes filles, par exemple, parce que j'ai visité les hôpitaux, j'étais avec notre gentil personnage au CHPG qui est venu en Afrique avec moi. On a battu euh, avec les jeunes filles qui avaient... Et, mais ils ont la joie en Afrique. Vous savez, ils ont la joie dans leur cœur, mais... Uh, they need a little bit of our support, but we also need support in Europe. I think we need to also work on our refugee system here, and I think we can help the, the children uh, and the causes of women here. And I think that's my role at the UN level and in Amor, I think, for Europe. I think we're going to build, Tina, I think we're going to build projects in Europe as well now. Your autobiography, Beauty as a Weapon, was published in 2011 by Michel Lafon edition. Obviously, your book is a universal message of hope and forgiveness, and sometimes you also may have been faced with difficult challenges. Tell us about some of these difficulties and how do you handle this? But before, uh, thank you, that's a very important question. I just want to share with you a few statistics because I think you should know them on the ground in Africa um, because that's why. I think we've made a really big difference in the last 10 years, just to talk about a more, because we have 42 years old that people's life expectancy, that's pretty serious. That means that at 42, that's your life. So can you imagine what that <coughs> means to us in Europe? C'est un choc, un choc énorme. Les mamans qui accouchent, c'est pas une joie, c'est que uh, 190 femmes vont mourir en Afrique, plutôt dans le sud, mais c'est des graves cas. Et en Europe, on a un. Et, et normalement, il n'y a pas de décès. Donc, le bataille avec un mort, les statistiques que je voulais partager sont aussi importantes, parce qu'on a changé ça. On a changé le stigma qu'ils ne vont pas coucher avec huit hommes et que les femmes de 14 ans ne vont pas avoir des bébés, ils vont à l'école. We've, we've, we've begun to change a system of thinking in, in Africa that didn't have those things and that was important. So my role on the grassroots with the four hospitals that we built, with the support of the, the, les hommes de, the, the men of power that have the money, that they come and give us the checks, but we put it in the right place. That's kind of what we do. Robin Hood, a little bit of Maria Teresa, a little bit of... Um, Indiana Jones and a little bit of ser serious businesswoman because you're representing people's support into what you're doing and you want to make sure those hospitals are built. So the facts on the ground, statistics, we have dropped from 25%, which was the, where, where AIDS was uh, um, uh, rampant and the transmission from mother to child, uh, we lost the baby and the mother. Now. It's 11% only, 
And that's a huge change in the, 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 the code of um, healthcare system. We brought a healthcare system of cancer to Malawi. They didn't have cancer support for children. Just for you to know what we did on the ground, in Mozambique, where we have 30, 40 years of communism, we changed the, the, the war that was in Sofala, and um, uh, there, was a, there was a civil war, and we, we helped bring back the children that were abandoned into the communities through the orphanage that was to give back, that we were receiving babies from 0 to 8 to 15. So the, the work has been um, very targeted, let's put it that way. And my mission was to target maternal health, health care in Africa. I did it somewhat, a little bit. And then the UN said, ah, come to America, please. We need you at the UN because you need to speak for the women and the girls that are being violated and whatever. So from Africa, I think they saw my life story and they saw what I was trying to do. I never had a child, but I have thousands of children. And I'm so grateful for that gift. And I'll fight for the rest of my life to help those thousands of children. So being a mother of many, has given me sometimes a lot of moments of loneliness, but not alone, but time to think and grow. Sorry, but I just wanted to share a few statistics with you that are important. How is it to Kevin now? Ah. Did you survive? No. No, but he's He's in Amor, right? So, chaque jour que je réveille, je pense, I think of him. I think of why am I, what's the mission, what, you know, I think of his, his little eyes and his light, and I think that I was called to help other little Kevins and a lot of other young girls and to give them dignity and uh, and and all the things that a little child should have so that's been probably what was important when I lived the Civil War because I saw what I I saw what you can lose and I saw the importance of family and I saw the importance of your roots and I saw the importance of humanity and, uh, and giving and sharing so I think uh, that's perhaps why I have a voice today that has give, been a, st a story. Uh, so the beauty, like now I can sign, I'm uh, doing a beauty contract, I always say to them, okay, I'll do, what is it, Rolex or who is it today? Is it uh, Max Factor? <laughs> is, it, is it Avon? Who's going to be the brand? well, then you're going to have to put a little bit into what we're fighting for. So I think that that's been great, and, and uh, they will have. So, voila. I think uh, what normally it takes me a lunch to get a hospital with Mr. Arno or Mr. Pino or whoever. Just bring me another one. I'll just have... No, but it's, it's, those people are just there to serve the mission of humanity, I think. And uh, instead of buying... Um, great, I'll wear the clothes and, and we'll be the... I'll walk the runway and we'll be that. But we must serve something bigger than ourselves. And I don't just say it. I really have walked it. And uh, I... I um, I think that's, uh, so the, the statistics are what is also important because people need to hear the statistics and what you've done because uh, um, I think we can do a lot more and I think we've just scratched the surface, I really tell you. And I think for Monaco we can do a lot and I think, um, I think we're looking at a world that, that has, uh, I think there are a lot of, I think my next mission I, I don't want to speak too early because we're on something important at the moment, but it's going to be to do with children and Im immigration, I think. 
and supporting the ones that have, okay, the ones that have been uh, disappeared. May I share that? So that's part of where we're going, and uh, it's going to be really important. And only, <laughs> yeah, <coughs> communicating, uh, continuing to to appear is great, but what are you appearing for? And uh, change the world? Let's change the world. Yeah. And we can do it. It just needs a little bit of uh, human support together. Each one of us has a gift. And uh, together, I think, we can make things happen. How have you been living in Monaco? And why did oh you choose the principality as your main residence? I, Monaco, it's my home. It's been a, a place of... Uh, 20 years, 20 years maybe, is it 20 years <laughs> when we first, and it's, it's, um, I, I feel, voila, I feel like I've been adopted in a very wonderful way, especially this evening, um, to um, continue in a, a, as an ambassador for you, in a very honorary, I'm very honored for this moment, because I feel w well here, I feel loved here. I feel there's been a grace given to me here. There's been a kindness. And I've managed to move a lot of things from here. So let's keep doing it. Dasha, if I could say something, I think that you have made the truth come to reality. And the reality of what's happening in the world, you're moving forward. And you're growing. I'm growing. I think it's great. I'm growing. And as I said, we, we have um, at Creme, we are on the f on the, we are re we are on the forefront of Africa. We are just across there is where I was born over there. We have Europe here. We have um, we are on the forefront of a, a very special place that can uh, be a very big key uh, today. I think uh, I think if it's well well done, I think. Uh, we can can be a strong voice here, as we always have, but even more. You are also ambassador of the Institute Pasteur. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell us about your uh, collaboration with this institute and how did you decide to engage in this? Well, the Institute Pasteur is is another example of of the collaboration I forgot to mention. Thank you, Prince Albert uh, came to Malawi to open the first hospital in 2009 and I asked him and he came and that's that's a friend he's always been there and he always will because we have that connection and uh, when I admire him for his work in humanity and especially what he's done with the environment and there's he's always be he's always going to be there because if I need something he yeah he's uh, when I was appointed he was the first to congratulate me and he's always been, he's a, voila, a Moor went to Malawi to open the hospital. I brought together the Institut Pasteur because I was their ambassador. They asked me to be their ambassador for, we actually raised a lot of funds for them. Uh, I, it was just at the same time of a Moor. So, and I brought them to Malawi and I brought them to Monaco they, they supported the labor laboratory in Malawi. They gave some equipment, which I think it was important to be part of, have been part of that. And uh, again, uh, uh, my mother always said, actually, that's one of the most important things you've done is the Institute Pasteur. I said, but mom, she said, no, that's really important, dear. And I said, but mom, that's, you know, that. She said, I, you, she said, no, that, that's renowned. That's really, I said, so, so with great, what, what I think is important, of course, is that they, they were fundamentally the ones who discovered the AIDS virus. Remember that we have um, 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 Professor Sinusuti, who, who is the leading Nobel Pre Peace Prize winner. So as a Moore is working on maternal health transmission from mother to child, it made sense that they asked me to be their ambassador for HIV because that's, they discovered the HIV virus. And also, the birth in Africa, they liked that I was um, 
involved in a in countries where there were a lot of things of, of injections of malaria and they were the ones who were doing all of that so we went to the I actually brought the guys from Parry Match into the into the to show Pasteur that it was cool, we took them into the malaria vault where they had all the mosquitoes. <laughs> and it was fun because we started to make Pasteur accessible. Voilà. Donc, um, the poor reporters, I think they, they didn't, they were scared of getting malaria in the, in the, but anyway, it, we've done a lot and it was an honor to represent such a great, um, and it, and I, they still ask me to help them. Uh, they said that I, I raised more funds for them in that one year than they have. So <coughs> I guess I must have done a few things right over there. And um, I just feel it's important. I was in Hollywood. I'm going to tell you a story, another anecdote. I was in, um, talking about the acting, I was in um, with Johnny English. I went over to Hollywood to Los Angeles. And I thought, okay, great. I studied acting, great. I'm, I know what I'm doing. I've done all the theater. And I saw, I had an, a few encounters with notably one of the, one who, one of the ones who sunk recently. <laughs> I won't get into the details of exactly names, but I think we can imagine who I'm talking about. And I thought, this can't be possible. You can't tell me that I have to go through all this to, to do my art and to be, you know. And I said, no, there must, I'm not called to, to do that couch service situation <laughs> to make a film. I've got to do more in life than that. So I figured, I said, back to mother, I said, mom, I don't think Hollywood's for me because even if I have the talent, no matter what I do, I'm going to have to face Mr. I don't want to say his name, but I think you know, and which was a joke because he was always very, he never did anything with me, but I knew what, what, what was required, and I said no. So what did I do? I took a full turn and I said, okay, Hollywood, out, Africa. Let's go back to where I'm born. Where were you born, by the way? Gabon. Gabon. Okay, because I said, ah, peut-être aller dans le coin. No, mais Gabon, c'est beau, pardon. Alors, euh, je ne connais pas Gabon, mais bonjour, sœur, du, du côté de Mozambique. C'est plus haut. Oh, hein? So, um, qu'est-ce que je disais là? <laughs> went back to Sorry, Africa. Ah, okay. You can see I'm an actress, kind of. So, so what I said is, I said, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go right back to Africa. And let's start... Uh, instead of doing that in Hollywood, Let's raise the funds to turn and to make hospitals or to change the health system or to do something. Let's use this, whatever talent God gave me to move something in humanity. So why did I, instead of becoming that, I went there. So it was kind of effective. <laughs> et, et, et en fait, si je réfléchis bien, tout est coulé entre temps en Hollywood, quelque part. C'est assez drôle, non? So I suddenly said, oh, it wasn't such a bad idea because all that uh, um, system has actually come to the fact that women are now victims of a, of a whole thing. And I, and I was like, no, no, this, I'm not going to be part of this. I'm going to be, there's a bigger job in life to support mankind. So I really grew in the right about turn from Johnny English where we could have launched into some career, but... I think the modeling was better to stay on. And actually, I signed the biggest modeling contracts from 45 ladies who are still great at 50 plus because it's there that I've made the biggest contracts. And it shows you that, uh, you know, we have a lot to do. And uh, it's not the, just that, I don't believe. I think uh, beauty. If you talk about beauty, what's my next question? <laughs> <laughs> what you see in the relationship with beauty? beauty you and the world around. Voila, beauty is. I I guess first, how do you see the, the glass? Is it half empty or half full? And I've I've always looked at it as half full. I'm kind of positive, and beauty 
is your it's if my it's not about me as my little it's about perhaps what if I served to change anything or someone's life or to make it better for one little child to save a life for someone to have made a difference in and can keep doing that then I've served my mission on this earth of beauty whatever if, if that was able to translate into uh, charming Mr. Je sais pas qui mais pas un directeur de Hollywood ou un producer non va charmer quelqu'un pour faire un hôpital c'est beaucoup mieux non et <laughs> j'ai compris qu'on va pas perdre notre temps à faire pourquoi tourner encore un film bah j'ai écrit le film le film ça sera un bon film il manque une histoire d'amour mais je pense qu'on peut le faire. <laughs> I think we can probably write that in still maybe coming who knows in 2013 you were appointed honorary consul of Malawi to Malacca yes what does this mission mean to you a woman, the president of Malawi, a woman, there we go. What does a mission mean? Uh, um, it means that Joyce Banda uh, said to me, uh, it was a very important moment because she said, you're colorblind, and I've always been, by the way. I've never seen it. I've never seen, I was a little girl. I was born, I, I just saw people that I loved. I, I, my, Francisco and Isabel and Simeon Manunu, who was, I don't know if she was white or orange or what. For me, it's my family. So I, I walked around like that, and she knew that. The president of Malawi saw that in me because when I came to Africa, she said, "But we have to be, you know, careful because there's there's been wars and people could take you. Don't you understand that?" She said, "You know, you could stay in Europe." being your supermodel, being your, in your successful life, you could have not done anything. You could never have come back to Africa to help me. You, you, you're fine. She said, but you came back to us. There must be a God called you back to help your people. Somewhat your people, because also my people are Portuguese and British and Scottish. Ça, c'est mes ancêtres. Mais je suis née dans ce continent. And she said, you... You don't, you don't have, you don't see the color. And she said, um, and that's when she said, where do you want to be consul? <laughs> she said, what can I do for you? I said, nothing. I just want to keep, just let me build the hospitals. Just give me the access to the government. Give me the access to, what do you need? Malawi's the worst maternal health. We, there were people, that, let me just tell you a few things. Women are walking five hours to a hospital and they're dying on the way, giving birth and the baby. There was no, there's no healthcare system. So that's why we went to Malawi first. That's why when I started a more with the first check from Mr. What supermarket guy, Mr. Pino, the guy caring or whatever, the son now. But I said to him, he said, Mais j'ai jamais fait un hôpital, Francois. Mais fais-moi confiance. Je vous, I will not let you down. And I, I went to Malawi and I saw that was the country that needed the hospital first. And I came back and he said, Ah, je pensais que vous allez prendre l'argent et qu'on ne se voyait plus. Je dis, Mais non, vous avez votre hôpital, venez voir, il est là. So they started to see that I actually was serious about what we were doing. And I, had, I wasn't in the government, but I think that I was actually encouraging them and working with them like on the ground the minister of health it was great we we were i i, I can't tell you how amazing it was to uh, d i i learned so much i was with these they don't understand first of all they've got this young girl first of all they don't normally talk to girls because they not they like to talk to men <laughs> and, I, and i'm a girl so you don't you don't tell us you know you we and, and Joyce was a woman, and she was the first second African president appointed uh, as a woman. And it was quite special that she said, uh, here, here's my Ministry of Health. This is the ho these are the hospitals we need. Where, 
where do you want to be? What do you want? I, she said, I think you should be something in Europe for us. We have to give you a position. I said, well, I don't need a position. I don't, I, I'm just fine. She said, well, can we ask, can I, can we ask if Prince Albert, can we have you in Malawi for the honorary consul? Can we give you a consul? And I said, uh, if you want. And I, I said, of course, I'd be honored to, to it's, it's just, a, and, and so that's why, uh, how Malawi came to ask me where it normally would have been Mozambique, no? Parce que je suis née en Mozambique, en fait. Mais c'était le Malawi, et elle a appelé Albert, le prince, pour dire, acceptez-vous qu'elle soit notre... <laughs> Parce qu'elle a fait quelque chose ici, on, on, on l'aime, et elle, elle vous aime là, donc est-ce que vous pouvez... Et voilà, le pont est fait. Et donc, là, monsieur le maire, que est présent et très joyeux de, de we're very happy that you're here was one of also the first uh, consul we had the first mission at the mairie de Monaco last two years ago it was exactly when I was appointed and we shared the mission of Malawi in his mayor and it was to show the pont entre le Malawi et le Monaco Et, et, et la ambassadrice, uh, the ambassador to Brussels was present and she gave a, a very nice speech about the problems on the ground. And we uncovered, um, we saw the generosity of Monaco. From that came the hospital support from the hospital of, uh, of um, Monaco. And we brought an exchange program on the ground. So it seems that y a des petits ponts qui se créent tout le temps. Et, et je crois que ce moment est important, beaucoup plus qu'on croit. Et Louisette, um, une amie, mais quelqu'un que j'ai beaucoup d'estime depuis très longtemps, elle le sait. <coughs> et et ce n'est pas par hasard qu'on est là encore ce soir. Et je crois qu'on va faire des grands pas. Parce que chaque fois qu'on... On est quelque part. Suddenly, we get the energy to move the world, or someone, and move that, and move that. And I think that uh, honorary consul is another honor, but I think we have another amazing honorary consul, our fellow compatriot Bettina from Portugal, who, who's, who's an emblem of the country of my father, but she's representing that in Monaco. Bettina is now on the board of Amor, and we're so honored to have her. And uh, she's a light, and someone that I think we're going to build a lot together with. And I think that Portugal will be one of those countries where we can share with Monaco something, some also, including, of course, other European countries. Mais il a pas un hasard non plus. Quand je parle de consul, en, consul, consul, consulat, c'est que you know, I'll tell you a story. When I was in the museum at the Tate, I saw these pictures of Degas and, you know, all these wonderful painters that we on esteem. Et j'ai vu une qui faisait des portraits des gens importants. Il y a, y a une qui, est, qui faisait plus les consuls et les gens comme ça. And I said, I was looking once at this consul, and I thought, ah, oh, c'est une très importante personne. <laughs> and I realized that, in fact, I'm a consul, but we're, nobody's important. We're just part of this world to serve something. But of course it's an honor. And of course uh, being in government is an honor as we serve something more important than us. So it means that you've been given a responsibility. It means that you... you Ben, les gens vous croient que vous pouvez peut-être aider les autres plus. C'est pour ça que c'est important. And finally, could you please tell us? And, sorry, I just have to share. There was one picture that I'll never forget. Joyce Banda made a photo of all her staff in Malawi. And everyone was chewa culture, which is the black culture, Chewa. And I was in the middle, the giraffe, 
And that was funny because she said, no, it doesn't, I was, in other words, there's no color. You're one of us. And that was the greatest honor that I could have gotten from a president of an African country where I lived a civil war. That's an honor. It means that they think that I'm part of, they gave me the respect of being one of them too. And that meant a lot. So, voilà. <coughs> Je ne sais pas si c'est bien exprimé, mais c'est pour ça que c'était encore c'est que, voilà, je ne vois pas, mais eux, ils ont reconnu que j'étais une de eux. Quelque part, la girafe qui est dans la jungle, si elle est striped or whatever, he's still an African giraffe, right? So, I guess they gave me a stripe for being an African. <laughs> But I'm, I'm anyway, that was a bit. In the middle of your struggle, is it not like homecoming to you, to your own human nature? You mean the giraffe? <laughs> In the middle of your struggle. Ah. Don't you feel like a homecoming to your human nature? Like I think we're all, you mean the, in, in the sense of what? In the sense of what? Uh, I, 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 I told you. Uh, in the experience of unity, Swami Pivajan Pat said, freedom is nothing but freedom with a past. Yes. Are you a free woman and still in about the future? I, th that's a great question. Um, I think today, I think that I have, I, I'm, I'm serene because I, I have hope. And, ser and, and free because um, I can I can keep doing what I'm doing. So, and I, I think if you keep walking with that, uh, what? I think that there's a lot to do. I think we have a lot, a lot to do, and uh, making a difference is the only word I can come up with. And I'm, I'm sharing. Uh, And finally, 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 finish this interview. Uh, You're a very good interview, by the way. <laughs> Could you just please tell us? I'm not really used to this, but. A few words about your current projects. Well, I think I've already shared the most important one, which we're going toward, as I said, in the world of children. And it's a project with the. Uh, a band, children and <coughs> losing, that's going to be huge. And uh, certainly uh, I will be signing more contracts. I mean, that I've just sort of said kind of no to something. So I think that there will be contracts. All that, the work of beauty is good. The, the work of, um, um, I, I'm excited about this new mission with Creme. I think that Monaco is, uh, this is important. I think we have a time of, um, I think we need to give a little bit more of a dream and a peu plus de, de joie. Et, et je crois que, uh, je crois qu'il y a ça là. Il y a un peu d'élégance qui manque. Et un peu de, de, de rêve, de, positive shows, and I think uh, that's what I would like to build forward in a story in different ways. Of course, it can be image, we're going to do that, that's easy, we can make stories. What is it? I guess I'm kind of Cinderella, in a way. And he said, you know, um, I always see the world uh, because I, I think the gold is inside of you. And if I have to end on that, I'm, I'm going to walk the yellow brick road, and I think that um, somewhere over the rainbow, there's a lot to do out there. Thank you so very much, Tasha, for listening. Thank you. Thank you so Excuse me. Excuse me. Tasha, there's a question that I'd like to ask. 
But to be on, sur le terrain, and you see all this misery, I think it takes a lot of courage of you to continue because it's so darn difficult to be able to cover everybody. How, you know, you can cover just a percentage and you know there's so much more to go. And, it, and, and I don't know if I could do it if I saw the misery, it would stop me from, uh, from uh, no, it wouldn't stop me, but I mean, I, I would have so much pain that I can't continue. And I, and I admire that you're able to, to face it. Because you mean, that is not easy. I know. So I know. how do you how do, do it, you baby? Know? How do you know that? How that do maybe you know? it's God who's helping you say, hey, all the other ones that are suffering, but we'll say what we can, our breath, right? Because sometimes I, yeah. I can't. Because it is so darn difficult. I tell you, right? there's a lot of... Up there, that's helping you. I couldn't and do it. And Prince Albert. And, and Prince Albert. And all of you, oh. and, and the, you want to talk about courage? I can't have it. There he is, Paul-Louis. There she is, Alessandrina. There they are, each yeah. one of them. Esther, there's my coach. <laughs> what a, d you know. Okay. Do we need another picture with the mayor? Yeah. After yeah, with what? the mayor. Yeah. After, yeah. because he's going to go. Good. Okay, you a little more this way. Okay, no, please follow me. Okay, you're hiding me. Okay, okay, here we go. Here. Okay, here we go. Nice my time. come on. Get over here. Here we go. Mais vraiment. Don't put it on me. Don't put it Tu veux lui tenir la main? Here. It's a pleasure to see you. I'm going to see Amor. You see? You see? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mais c'est pas moi. C'est vous voyez le Seigneur en moi, parce que c'est pas moi. Mais il il nous aide, non? Oui. Des fois, c'est. Je pense que c'est la réponse que vous faites. Est-ce que vous vous sentez Est-ce que vous transmettez Thank you. Mais je crois qu'on pourrait faire des belles choses avec Crème et ensemble, ambassadeur. Je crois qu'on peut hein, rayonner. On va. On va. On fait. Elle photo.